Okay, before we get started, we're doing a live show. Yep. And you should all come to it. Should. It's on the 13th of June. We're going to be showing uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit to celebrate our first birthday of doing this nonsense. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, then we're going to be doing a live podcast uh, afterwards and you can all get involved and share your theories and queries. So that's on the 13th of June. It's just three quid. Just three quid. It's at the Pavilion in Reading. So if you're in the area, you know, definitely come down to that. It's there. And uh, yeah, you can get tickets online at kaiju.fm slash live. Or if you're in the Reading area, you can come to the Nags Head and uh, buy them over the bar. And also a pint. Also a pint. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? I think it's good. You might see one of us and we'll be like, all right. How you do? Like that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 13th of June, £3, Pavilion Reading. Come and see Who Framed Roger Rabbit and have a chat with us. It'll yeah. be a fun time. All right, see you there. Hello and welcome back to the Space Jam Continuum, the show where we try to make a cohesive cinematic universe out of something that was never meant to be one. I'm Chris McLennan. I'm Carl Noble. And I am deeply uncomfortable about something in your house, Cal. Um, it's going to require... Is it, it's is gonna it require, Sausage House? It's not Sausage House, uh, which is also going to... We, we'll put that up on the Twitter, we'll show them what Sausage House is. Yeah, more about the creepy girls on the back of the door. It's not the creepy ghost on the back of the door. There's a lot in your house. <laughs> <you're gonna> be <laughs> We, yeah. we, we should slam some of this up on the Twitter so yeah, people really know what should. we're talking about. Um, but uh, in Cal's bathroom, yeah. there is a small shelf which has always, to my recollection, singularly <laughs> held a pair of needle nose pliers. Now, why they are there, I don't know. It's hard to say, really. It's hard to say. Yeah. But they're always there. Yeah. Pride of place on this tiny shelf. Now, today, the shelf has been contaminated, Cal. There is a small pair of nail scissors and some hair. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's Nathan's hair. Because it's not mine, I don't remember. But why but why, do you, why would he be over at the shelf? I mean, it's, it's below the mirror. Yeah, I suppose so. But it's definitely concentrated on the left-hand side of the shelf. It is, it is. I mean, I don't know. I imagine Nathan's probably cut his hair at some point. Or maybe he's been trimming uh, his underarm hair. Or chest hair. <laughs> All possible. Chest hair, actually. Yeah, that... Logistically, like, if I was... If I was, like... If it's a crime scene. Yeah. Which I guess it sort of is. I mean, we could treat it as one. Then, yeah, chest hair <laughs> might <laughs> actually work. But I can't imagine him there with nail scissors just going across. <laughs> just going across, no. Basically, what we're saying, Nathan, is sort it out. You know full well that that shelf is it's for, for needle those needle pliers, nose pliers and nothing else. Yeah. Although, at one point, what else? There, there was something on there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but we sorted that out. But Quick I can't sharp, remember what but that I was. don't want to sort that out. No, I don't want to sort it out. Either. That's why it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just needed to get that off my chest. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you do this? No. <laughs> uh, and just because otherwise I, it was going to hang over me for the rest of the show and I wasn't, I wasn't going to be able you, you, you just need to, I say, needed it. to say it. Okay, no, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. It's, it's put me right off kilter. Well, to get you back on kilter, should we watch some cartoons? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, what did we watch last week? What was the last one last week? Uh, a gruesome twosome. It was the Tweety was... Captain and Snooks oh, yeah, and it was Hector. That, yeah, that cat with like a weird bulbous, like... Yeah, like tomato nose. Aubergine for a nose, yeah. yeah. It was really weird. I don't know about that. No. Was he the cat was he the captain or Snooks? He was he was captain. He Snooks was... was the slightly dimmer one of okay. the two. Where does that put us then? Uh it's a tale of two mice. It's a Babbitt and Catstello. Mice version. Yeah, now Babbitt and Catstello have cropped up before, and they were definitely cats, as the name Catstello yeah. would suggest. Yeah. But now they're mice versions, so I think that's gonna be difficult to reconcile in and of itself, so I think we should just launch in. I think we should. Because otherwise we're we're gonna make more problems for ourselves before we even start yeah and we do that enough we do and we'll do it again <laughs> i'm sure uh so we are watching tale of two mice it's a babbit and catstello open brackets mice version close brackets number from june 30th 1945 let's go see what this is about Mice versions, then. <sighs> Not gonna lie, I didn't really like that. 
You didn't like it? That was hard. What, what, what it was, was the, it was Cat Stello constantly screaming Babbit Babbit like that really oh but it's Abbott and Cost- Costello it's yeah, like it's, I know, what, it's gonna happen it annoyed me <laughs> I, was, I was annoyed <laughs> by it fair enough uh, it was I don't know I, like other than the the skirting board list oh, yeah. thing so being confirmed yeah I got nothing yeah but. Are you not in any way interested as to how Babbitt and Castello became mice? I don't. I, no, I don't think that's the. I don't. Think it's the the cat versions that we saw. I think this is just some mice who are also Babbitt and Castello. So I don't. I don't, I don't think. What do that. you think happened to Abbott and Costello when they came through the portal? Then, um, do you think these exist in parallel with the cats? I think so. No, like, it didn't. There was nothing there which told me that they had been turned into mice. I don't know because because they seem uh, quite Catstello at least uh, was very adept at uh, impersonating other animals. He became a cat pretty much at one point. He became a donkey pretty much at one point. That is true. I don't think he knows that they've change particularly i think they've gone through some iterations right okay so so i you don't think that they realized they were cats and now you don't think they're quite realizing that they're mice well i think babbit does well rats i think babbit like understands their predicament yeah and catstello doesn't really no he's just still catstello yeah okay now i can see that right because so basically i mean it was it was a standard cat and mouse type episode yeah you know it, like they're trying to get some cheese cats chasing them around but babbitt's basically staying at home and sending cat stello out to uh do all the work do all the work yeah. uh to the point where when he gets captured by uh the cat uh he immediately just advertises for new a new roommate. flatmate yeah. Wanted, <laughs> yeah uh which confirmed our skirting board lease thing it, it said shared shared expenses yeah uh, I and mean, the thing is, like, like they had a front door, like, yeah, you know, it was a, a proper house. But, like, yeah, I, I genuinely think that Babbitt understands that they're going through some weird iterations. Either that each time they cross through the portal, they turn up as a in there as a different animal. Yeah. Whereas I think Castello kind of just sees Babbitt, his friend Babbitt, in whatever guys. Yes. Yeah. He's just, yeah. He's just like, yeah, that's my mate. That's my mate Babbitt, and doesn't really notice that it's different. So do you reckon we're going to see more episodes with them as different? Yeah, because I think they've been, I think they've been donkeys before as well. Yeah, probably because he, did, he like, did do donkey well. when because when he yeah when he impersonates the other animals like it's he just basically morphs. He does, yeah, yeah. But I think it was. Uh, I mean, I don't really know the difference between a donkey and a jackass, but he was definitely a jackass, not a donkey. I because I think that's why. Do you he think was... is there a difference? Yes. We need our is that, ba- marine is that based on anything? Um, it's why ba- would, it's, mar- why would it's, our marine biologist help? Because uh, he he's the closest. Because he's, he's, clo- yeah, he's the closest we've got to somebody who knows about animals. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain they are different. I'm fairly certain that donkeys can breed, but jackasses can't. Right, like they, they, they jackasses are, are like end, end of the line. Yeah, they, they, they are unviable. Um, that like they, they they can't even breed amongst themselves. Whereas donkeys, I believe, you can breed donkey with donkey. All right, I don't know anything about this, so I'm not going to contest or agree with that. Good. I'm, not... I'm keeping my options open. <laughs> I'm fairly. If I, everyone I, just... writes in and says you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. Then, I mean, that, like yeah. I'm I'm off scot free. Yeah. I, like I say, it's just it's something I remember being told at some point. Whether or not it is bear with me true. for a second. Well, that's that's him on the floor then. There's a small solar powered dancing Mr. Bean on Cal's windowsill and when it's sunny. <laughs> you make my is... house seem so <laughs> weird. <laughs> Your house is pretty weird. The, okay. He dances around, he makes an annoying clicking sound, and I had to sort it out because it was driving me absolutely mental. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even heard it. I'm back in the room now. Yeah. Well honest. done. <laughs> I mean you didn't leave the room to do that. No, I just went over to the window. <laughs> yeah. Uh not much to go on then is that what you're saying you're, um, you're not that interested in that one i don't know i think the i think i was um deafened by the Bye-bye. yeah like that i think i was just watching it going oh this is 
and and the 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 version we watched uh the sound quality wasn't amazing either no so i think the 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 white noise was causing me some issues uh there was that other tale of two mice on the on the internet there it's a little scientific report neil degrasse tyson was there in one of the photographs do you want to do you want to watch that um yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's about the same sort of length as the what let's come back to it at the end if we feel like we're under time Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay. Because I think that might be quite fun. Let's go let's watch the alternate tale team mice. We'll release it as a supplementary treat <laughs> yeah. where we just watch the wrong thing and try and try and weave it right in. Because that could be Babbitt and Castello once they're back in our universe. It's yeah. like, oh, crap. What? Yeah, we, we didn't turn back into yeah. Abbott and Costello. Shit. <laughs> uh, let's move on then. Uh, let's go and see our good pink boy. We haven't really seen much of Porky in we haven't, a while. But what is interesting is this is another... This is another Porky the Fourth remake yeah, of so Porky the, the Third. The agency are still doing Not, a cover up. It's another Engine Trouble one. They seem to be keen on remaking. Yeah, so it's a colour remake Indians of Engine Trouble from 1938, but they've and called by it Indians, Wagon Wheels. I Heels. mean Native Americans, yes. but they call them Indians, and well, it's in the title. Well, they call them Injun. Injuns. Yeah, like, and it's uh, it's it's actually been renamed Wagon Heels. Uh, yeah, so we're watching uh, Wagon Heels. It's a Porky Pig number from July 28th, 1945. And I think, because the last time they remade a Native American episode, we thought it was the one with the big yeah. guy who just and smashed through mountains. This is it. And now I think that this is it, because the last one definitely wasn't. <laughs> Should we watch it and find out? Let's have a look. Go on, then. What you got for me? <laughs> press a chord. Neither of us can say a word. Like, <laughs> God, but that's, that's the worst it's been for one we've seen before. Wow. Because it's like, I just don't know anymore. No. I mean, there's like, a, there's a, there was a lot. I, okay, so I don't think there was a lot to help out the Tooniverse at large, but there were a lot of little things that yeah. I'm confused about. I, so it was the one we thought it was for a start. Yes, it was. It Giant, was like, yeah, like... Engine Joe. Indian... Uh, Joe, like he's su- he's got superpowers. Yeah, he can break a mountain in two. Yeah, he cleft the mountain in twain. Yeah, his he can he, ca- he can walk across or walk up through unpassable rivers. Yeah, which also have plugs. Yeah, the horse just drains drains the river. Yeah, I mean, and no more water this, seems to try and cub. Like that's not uh, an uncommon thing in cartoons, though. That you can just drain large no. bodies of water by pulling the plug. large bodies of water. Yes, this was a river. So there was flow. No yeah. more water came, which suggests to me it is a contained body of water with one of those wave machines you get in a swimming pool. Possibly it is. I mean, the thing is, is like we do have to remember that this was a show because this is a remake, so it's possible that that's true. They've that acknowledged, this is they've just acknowledged a set. that this is false. Yeah, th- this could just be a set. So for ease of it, they just went. Well, we'll just say the horse pulled the plug. Maybe. Why not? Uh, other things that were different uh, from the first time we watched it uh, was... Well, actually, it's not different because it was black and white the first time we watched it. Yeah, so it could have been the same, but we didn't notice. But uh, It was that the green guy was green. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the sort of happy-go-lucky, I don't care who sees me use my tune powers Yeah, I know guy. something you don't know. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. He's he's sort of bluish-green with a green beard, which yeah. to me makes him some sort of like pixie his, or leprechaun. And his beard is prehensile. Yeah, he can use it like a hand. Yeah, he can move it about, do all sorts of stuff. So he's some sort of fey creature, which, you know, could become troubling and creating... We've got another sort of plane of the Tooniverse yeah. now. Yeah, it, it, it is weird. I mean, the thing is, is we, we saw um, Goebbels, he turned green. Are so, you suggesting that Goebbels is a fey creature? No, I'm suggesting that maybe this guy is from our side and has just spent a bit too long over there. Do you think it's something to do like they come over and they realize that they can wield a certain amount of like power mm. and they just get sort of just hung up on it and obsessed with it? Yeah, possibly. So like I mean it opens the questions and like doesn't give us much time to answer them because uh it's that was July 28th 1945. Uh, so there's only two well we're only going to be watching one more episode before the war's over. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to find out what Goebbels' powers were. But, no, no, I don't think but we are. I don't think that has to stop us speculating wildly. No, I mean, uh, I think if anything's going to stop us speculating wildly, it'll be some sort of lawsuit. 
Um, <laughs> 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 you know well, uh, until then i think we're, we're free to speculate away i mean do you think it could have turned the tide of war if goebbels had grown a beard yeah yeah well i mean <laughs> and, like, like, he you, got can... more stuff done he because like, he prehends our beard that increases his productivity by 50 percent. do you think it would have been prehensile on our side though no, but he was over the side. He was. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, we don't know if he's still here, though, at this point. Or whether or not he's ducked back. No, but, like... And we're... can he grow a beard on their side? Or does he just have whatever he had? If he came back, grew a beard, then went back yeah. over. Because that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know how much, kind of, hair changes, or whether or not it grows or not, or whether or not you're kind of just born you just with what you got. You are a person with a Because I kind of imagine your, your 70 beard. Sam was born with what he's got. Well... Given the fact that, and we only noticed this last week, we posted a hideous uh, yeah, picture, picture of your 70 Sam up on the uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, um, I've never really noticed before that your 70 Sam doesn't, it's not a moustache. No, it's his he's whole just, face. His whole face is furry and orange. Yeah. Like he's like, he looks like the Lorax. He does. So, but I mean, possibly he's, I mean, from that freaky photo, he's not a human. No, that freaky photo suggests he's got weird tentacles on yeah, his face. Yeah, some but, sort of, like, Lovecraftian monster. Yeah, but, yeah, so, like, he's just an, a creature with a beard. Yeah. Or a creature with that much Hairy hair. face, yeah. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe there's not Cause a I, I've, beard Because I've never seen Porky need to shave. I've never seen Daffy. I've, I don't know, we have seen Daffy with a beard, but it's always kind of been stuck on. Yeah, they've always been stuck on. Bugs has had a beard, but it's, it's been stuck on. Like yeah. And like, like, yeah, possibly, we've never seen anyone shave. No, like possibly so, hair doesn't grow. There you go. I'm putting that forward then. That like Goebbels, if he'd done his research, yeah, would have gone back to our universe, grown a beard, gone back to the two universe, and been yeah. able to increase his productivity fifty percent by having an extra it's limb. A good thing we weren't making this podcast in the past, then, isn't it? Because he would know. Yeah, that's good. It's good thing this wasn't going out on <laughs> on on radio on time radio. <laughs> Uh, but the worry, of course, is that, you know, time travel is definitely a possibility. Yeah. Um, so let's hope he doesn't show back up yeah, that would bearded be and ready to, to wage war. The, oh, there was something else that was interesting. Was uh, that Porky the Fourth oh, is, yes. is a lot shorter and more slender well, that's than Porky not nec- the Third. Not necessarily shorter, but like, and not necessarily more slender, but like, like the the fact of the matter is, the one thing we know is that Porky the Fourth is wearing trousers. They just look like a pig's legs. Yeah. So, because at one point, Injun Joe swings it in with an axe and he leaps from the pig leg trousers to avoid... It. So it looks like he's been cut in half and then he just drops back we into We should have him. paused it to have a look at his... We're going to have to go back. I Let's want, do that. Yeah, I want, I want to pause it. And have a look at <laughs> I, like, I can tell. <laughs> we should have paused it. And then your eyes changed and it was like, we're doing it. We? we can do this. Okay, let's go and do that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so on closer inspection, yeah. his physique is near identical, but he is wearing uh, spotted, spotted boxes, yeah. which leads me to believe that Porky the Fourth is a never nude. Yeah, and as Porky the Third, who you know he's pretty much got to be a facsimile of. Yeah, um, didn't, didn't wear, ever wear yeah. trousers. He yeah. was the most naked you could be because he'd wear a little jacket and a bow tie yeah. and nothing else. Exactly. And Porky the Fourth being a never nude. Oh yeah, because the malformed puffy don't yeah. trotters. <laughs> uh, Porky the Fourth being a never nude. Um, with non-malformed puffy doe trotters. He's yeah. got just trotters. He's he, has, he has just got normal trotters, yeah. He has to wear trousers over his spotty boxes to, to make it look to like, look like a, yeah. a, a pig's legs. So it's kind of like those aprons you can get, which are like naked man apron. Yeah, but it's it's naked pig trousers. trousers. Like, are yeah. they a thing? Can we get them? I'd rather not. Hmm. I mean, okay. you can do what you want. I, I'll Google it. <laughs> 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 naked some, pig trousers via some sort of VPN maybe <laughs> yeah, <laughs> soul. yeah so there's that there's, we've discovered that about Porky the Fourth yeah. he's, an, he's a never nude there you and go. he has to wear pig trousers <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't have thought it I mean the thing is, is this was this was very clearly Porky the Fourth as well because he, he just stutters it's, it's a the lot full more. on stam- and I, I, I noticed at the end of the previous episode the Tell Two Mice the in the that's all folks like that's that's gotten real 
hammed up. Like it's yes. such a stutter now. Yeah. And that was always how we could sort of tell Porky the Third and Porky the Fourth apart. Yeah, because was, Porky the Third just didn't stutter that much at all. He still stuttered, yeah, he but it was stutter, never, but... never as intense. But it's like Porky the Fourth. I don't know if he has a massive stutter or if he's just trying to emulate Porky the Third and getting it wrong. He's just overdoing it. Yeah. Like it's like someone doing an impression. It's like you kind of have to ham it up past all possible. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to find the one characteristic characteristic of theirs, yeah. and then go right. I'm just going. It's like drawing a caricature of somebody. Yeah, it's like everyone's Christopher Walken impression. Like yeah. you know, it's like I I can definitely tell that's Christopher Walken, and he very occasionally sounds like that, but he doesn't really sound yeah, like that's that most not, of the time. Yeah, that's not him all the time. Uh, I've lost my list, so uh, what uh, well, are we moving on to? Uh, we're, we're going to watch a uh, hair conditioned. Hair uh, conditioned. Yeah, it's, it's a Bugs Bunny number from August 11th, 1945. Once again, hair. I mean, I know it's more ripe for punnage, but... Yeah. I just think it's irresponsible of the agency to uh, inaccurately sh- label all archives for the sake of making puns. Or maybe maybe it's that they're inaccurately marking them so that they're harder to find. I mean... It's all on Wikipedia, mate. Yeah, but that's now. It wasn't there? Yeah, I guess so. Because because that this would have been got, called hair conditioned. When so it was you, released. so they don't want a rival agency going. You know, bring me all all rabbit files. Yeah, I want to see. Agency. I want to see the bunny files. Anyway. Bring me the bunny files. <laughs> and then they bring you like a really slender document. Yeah, and it's like, like oh, I'm sure there was more than that. There must be more. Yeah, oh, so, he's uh, an elusive wabbit. Yeah, like, and and file them all under H. <laughs> skills okay <laughs> that's what's happened yeah so uh we're watching a bugs number called hair conditioned from august 11th 1945 that was some real early bugs that was very early bugs so bugs had a job yeah bugs had a job in a department store he yeah. basically was part of uh the it was in the like camping goods display and he basically would just hop around in there making it look wholesome and like nice summery yeah. and nice yeah. um but the owner of the department store uh after work one day shows him to the taxidermy department and yeah. gets him to pose on a thing yeah. uh to see what he'd look like stuffed that's what he says we're moving you to a different department yeah like, like it's still his job yeah it's like oh well you know like oh we're closing this one this this one's uh, done for the season move you on but what's interesting is when bugs gets sort of wind of what's going on like he he takes the shopkeeper for a you know for a ride of course like as he does but he's not using any tune powers no like everything that bugs has a sort of penchant for is still there he loves disguises Yep. Especially dressing as a woman, yeah. Like, and you know, he's a bit of misdirection. He's, he's wily. He's like, yeah, yeah. And he can get out of a pickle, but he wasn't using any tomb powers. Now, no. I'm wondering whether this is the reason Bugs like rejected society. I wouldn't be surprised because I mean, he seemed uh, initially quite happy with his job. Like, he was like, oh, okay, another day, another carrot, and you know, he was just the same way as anybody is with their job. Not overly enamored in it but yeah. just he's Jobs doing it job. and, he's, and he was quite happy in what he was doing but then you know once your boss goes okay we're closing your department now we're going to kill you and put once you over your here boss, <laughs> like in his fancy suit without putting an apron on or anything starts sharpening the knife yeah yeah you've got to start asking questions about your, your employment your yeah. employment rights yeah it, it like it definitely seemed to me very like very early bugs and the interesting thing is, is at what point in his time? Like, well, well, we know what point in his timeline, but at what point in the Tooniverse's timeline do we think this is? Like, do we think this is pre demarcation or? I think it's pre demarcation, yeah, because like we started seeing bugs reasonably early post demarcation, yeah. and he already was rocking tune powers. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we don't really see like what happens after. After he gets out of it, basically. No. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is uh, a, a catalyst for the human demarcation. Because we know that sometime between 1927 and 1937, uh, humans and animals went from living side by side perfectly yeah. happily to humans being you know, quite separate Oops, and not yeah. allowed in the cities. Um, and this... This, I don't know if it's a one-off event or if there's a lot of this kind of stuff going on. Yeah, possibly. But uh, 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a catalytic event to that early demarcation, which we haven't seen much. Uh, we, no, we haven't sign seen of our evidence. We no. know we know it sort of started to phase out. Yeah. Um, I remember like a, a giant human uh, being involved in the one where Porky was like a baseball announcer. Yes. And like it's like okay, they've, well, I mean, I guess they started letting them back in. And we started seeing humans in more menial jobs, but the dogs seem to still mostly be in charge for a while. And it sort of eked back in, and the demarcation line became blurred and then eventually disappeared. But this, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened, like, just before. Hmm. I'm just thinking, like, do you think Bugs has a lot to do with the demarcation being put in place and also largely to do with the demarcation disappearing because a lot of things are bug centric and if he's if if his past self has had such a like a bad time with humans you know one's trying to kill him yeah there. but his future self knows he has to he's gonna have to get along with him and he has to make sure that everyone else because gets he along with needs humans. michael jordan yeah, and he, to he, play basketball he, like, against like, like, Yeah, he can't have all the tunes hating on humans. So the best way to get them accepting of humans from our world is to get them to start accepting the humans from their world again. Yeah, so, yeah I think it's important. I also think that Bugs at this stage pr- possibly doesn't necessarily see it as an anti-human thing. It's just like I think I think Bugs possibly at this point just thinks just society leaves thing. society. Yeah, he just goes, no, forget it. I'm going out to the. Yeah. I'm going out to the woods. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm going to go uh, out to the woods. I'm going to have like a Rocky esque montage <laughs> of me <laughs> developing toon powers. Yeah. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be punching like meat and I'm going to be like running up and down stairs and I'm going to be dragging a log through the woods. Yeah. Running up mountains. Yeah. And then at the same time, they'll be, you know, cutting to some human in a globo gym of some kind. Yeah. And you'll know at that point that, that Bugs is going to win. Obviously, because he he's his training experience is pure. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't know if I'd call him pure. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, that it, it it I think that is quite interesting. Like you know, knowing that Bugs is the time travel that he is, and knowing the end goal, um, you know, really puts a big spin on a lot of these a lot of the episodes, and also the the arc of the Tooniverse. Like but how much of it has been ministered by Bugs. How much of this has been? Yeah, and as and the more we see him, like, because he cropped up at the start there. Yeah, and now I don't think that was intended by any anyone. Like, no. I don't think. I I think he. I think possibly the bugs we saw sitting on the shield at the start. That was that was future time traveling bugs just having a laugh with it. Yeah, because he pulls down another identical screen yeah. without the Warner Brothers shield, and, and him then sat he on it. and then he pulls it back up, and it's just him sat on his name. Yeah, Bugs Bunny. Like, so I, I think he's having it. Like, I think once, and that might even be like post Space Jam Bugs. Yeah. Where he's he's like, just, everything's fine. Now yeah. I'm going back and just having fun yeah, with I'm it. I'm just going to have a laugh with everything. Yeah, yeah. And because we, we definitely <clears throat> see that shift in Bugs' personality. That's why that's why you can sort of tell whether it's early Bugs or late Bugs. Yeah. Uh, in his timeline, regardless of when it is in the in the Tooniverse, is that, like, you could just tell by, by Bugs' demeanor and Bugs' powers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I was, that was that, that was interesting. That was a very interesting one. I really liked that, and, and it is interesting now. Like you know, continuing to watch well any episode, knowing that bugs could just be in the background working big, big plans, yeah, or even just small plans, small funny plans, small good plans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, small good plans. Well, I th- next character we're coming with. What's this one? Uh, oh, bashful buzzard. Bashful Buzzard. Beaky. Beaky Buzzard. I do like Beaky. Beaky Buzzard is good fun. He is hilarious. I'm looking forward to it, but first, I think we should take a visit to the Porky Piggy Bank. Yeah, that's not a good, uh, that's, that's, that's that's not not a good, good idea. That's not a good idea? No, that's a well, great f- idea. Fuck you, No, pal. it's a great idea. It's it's not good. It's great. Well done, you. <laughs> Okay, uh, first of all, thank you all so much for listening to the show and supporting the show. Yeah, uh, it's good that we don't have to do this alone. It is good. One thing Cal does have to do alone is wear those big hands. 
Yeah, day I mean, nine is it? Day nine? Yeah, it is day nine. Day I think I think realistically, they, yeah, they are big enough for somebody else to help me wear these big hands. But <laughs> it's just going to become awkward. Could, could, could get, get I reckon somebody else those. could get in, but I just think it would be awkward if they tried. Uh, yeah. Uh, do check out uh, the Twitter. Follow the hashtag thirty three days of big hands. Uh, wear some big adventures. hands of your own in in a show of solidarity. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there are some things. You could do to help us out if you're if you're enjoying the show. Please do consider uh, going over to kaiju.fm and clicking support us and having a look at the Patreon page there uh, for as little as a, a dollar a month, which is less than twenty five yeah, cents exactly. an episode. And that's only if you listen to us, and that's if you only listen to us. Uh, like, uh, you know, that's pretty good value. I so if you're so. enjoying the show, uh, please do consider going over there to support us. Otherwise, uh, there's other things you can do to help us out. If you listen on uh, iTunes or really and, any... Sis- and we know some of you do. And we know some of you do. We've been looking at the stats. We've looked. <laughs> We've looked. Fourth most popular platform. <laughs> uh, please uh, do leave us a review and a rating uh, yeah. because it really helps our visibility. Currently, few enough people have reviewed. Well, that, that's within, it. Like, uh, like, for us to have a rating. Yeah, we, we, so. we just need a, like, a few more just so it goes into a rateable thing. Yeah, so I implore you, if you listen on iTunes, please just just take two minutes out of your time and, yeah. and give us a review uh, because that would really help out our visibility. Um, also, on any other system, really, that any any system that lets you yeah. review or rate stuff, please, yeah. please do that because uh, it, it really helps us out in reaching more people which is good otherwise get involved on the twitter get involved on the facebook group you can find us uh, at tsj community on twitter and you just search the space jam continuum on facebook and you'll get, find us get involved in the conversation um and beyond that just tell people yeah go out you know just tell anybody you see tell people you don't see walk around the street talking just to yourself. screaming from behind stuff yeah exactly just <laughs> shout from inside a bush <laughs> uh and the other thing you can do, obviously, to support us is come to our live show on oh, the 13th of June. Yeah. Then you uh, get to meet us. You, you get to... Co- I don't know if that's a positive or negative. You say it every time, like, it's a... I think it's a positive. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very... They like, to, they like to hear our voices. I think they'd like to see our faces. <laughs> well, they could shake my big hands. They, they can shake your big hands. The big hands will be making an appearance. It'll they be after be. the 33 days. But uh, uh, I'll probably have my back. If I haven't done be about. to the second hand shop by then. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's the 13th of June. Uh, tickets are only £3. It's in Reading at the Pavilion, and we're going to be showing Who Framed Roger Rabbit and doing a live show so you can actually get involved and be on the show. Uh, that's a good cheap way to go to the cinema and it's, have a nice time. Yeah, you, you can't go to the cinema that cheap these days, especially not to see such an awesome film. Like yeah, Who and Framed you know Roger the film's Rabbit. good already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know what you're getting yourself in for. So, yeah, absolutely. Please do come down to that. You can get tickets for that at kaiju.fm slash live. Or if you're in the Reading area, you can come to the Nags Head and uh, buy them straight from us. Yeah. Uh, one of us yeah. is normally there. One of us is normally there. Sometimes both of us at the same time. And what fresh hell that is. Because <laughs> it's like this, but all the time in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, please uh, help us out any way you can, any way you can afford to. Uh hope you keep enjoying the show and yeah. uh, let's watch some cartoons I think it's a good idea Beaky Buzzard is back oh, I do like Beaky and his like weird character yeah he's just like I, I just I like that every because every buzzard we've seen has kind of been like that. Yeah, quite I thought a lot we, of we birds. thought it was because there was that one that um, was it a buzzard that Sniffles adopted? Um, what was that? I don't know if it was a buzzard. I don't know if it was some, some sort, sort of hawk. hawk. Yeah, but yeah, it it seemed to Similar have the demeanor. same sort of yeah uh, character but, going. Yeah, on. let's see what Beaky's up to. We haven't seen him in a while, uh, so we're watching the Bashful Buzzard. It's a Beaky number from September fifteenth, nineteen forty-five. War's over. It is, but th- this here says it's a follow-up to 1942, uh, Bugs Bunny Gets the Boyd. So yeah, it's... but that was where we saw Beaky last time. Yeah, but it's a follow-up, so it's, so it's not like, oh, here's just what Beaky's... Uh, this is like, you know... He's up, to, he's up to whatever was going on at the end of that last one. Yeah. Well, let's have a watch. Okay. So we started that one thinking it was exactly the same. Because it started exactly the same. It did. Glad we didn't miss that one out. We yeah. were thinking, because uh, Bugs isn't in this one, we no. were thinking maybe it was like Bugs had 
Oh, good. Uh, Bugs had looped around and uh, not been not that been there that time. Yeah. Uh, so we're seeing an all like an alternate version based on that. That is not the case. This, no. It, this is you know the next day or just another day, and there the 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 buzzard kids are being sent out to to Get hunt meat. again. Yeah. Uh, similar to the previous one, his brothers and sisters are nailing it. Yeah. And, he's not and, Beaky's and, not and doing Beaky it. or Killer, as his mother calls him, has sent out to get even a butterfly, even just a worm. Yeah. But he's not very good at the old hunting bit. So they head out to the farm, his brothers and sisters are nailing it, they're bringing like sheep and yeah. cows back. Um he tries to get a rooster, smashes into something. Well, right, he smashes into the metal oh, yeah, weather the, vane rooster the weather vane. on the top. <laughs> uh his mother, you know, isn't happy with him, sends him out to go and Gets yeah. some more stuff. He embarrasses a lady sheep by just taking her wool, and yeah. she's just left there in a nighty. Yeah, she didn't um, seem happy. Which so he gave the wool back, obviously. Uh, nice and then he was sort of just like left out. It's like you're not coming back with empty hands. That's not what's happening. Yeah, and he got a baby bumblebee. He got a baby baby bumblebee, which, which was a wasp. Definitely a wasp because the baby bumblebee's uh, like parent uh, came and was like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" And he points up at Vicky Buzzard, and then the bee. Yeah. stings uh, Beaky, freeing the child, and they fly off. Now, if it were a bee... It would have ripped its own ass out and That bee would died. be dead. Yeah. So, uh, that was a wasp. So Definitely yet, a wasp. An- yet another... No yeah. one knows what anyone is. <laughs> which is kind of nice, because it, like, it must keep like racism sort of down. It's not, no one really knows what anyone is. Yeah. Like, yeah no, it definitely no, keeps no the racism cares. down. No one really cares. We have another problem at all with the racism <laughs> in this at all. <laughs> yeah, but it's been like... After the early... Because the racism was all towards different types of humans. It was, it was, definitely. It was like, all it, it wasn't different between, types of humans. It wasn't between the different animal tunes. Yeah. Uh, except, I mean, like, I mean, at the start we had the kind of second class citizens with like dogs being in charge, monkeys Dogs were definitely in there. charge, but I don't know. We well, didn't that seems see, to like, have petered out. Yeah. That, yeah, that seems to be mostly petered out uh, and hoping we're going to see the end of it for at least a fair while yeah. now the war's over. Although... Vietnam will start. It'll be back. Yeah, but uh, we'll we'll leave it for now. Uh, so Beaky's like left out in the wild. He starts like taunting what we thought was a turtle. We thought it was Cecil. Yes, uh, oh. but uh, he starts bashing this like <laughs> you little fella tortoise's <laughs> head, and then it pans out and it's a dragon's head. Now, yeah. but you it's you heard that right? It's head. a it's a, dra- it's a dragon. Yeah, it's a whole dragon and a big one at that. Yeah. Like, like with I a thought, tiny, I, tiny head. I thought it was some sort of like large dinosaur at the start, and then I saw its wings, and I was like, "Hold on, I'm fairly certain dinosaurs of that size never had wings." So that's a, that's a bit. Dragons are in, yeah, dra- they're, they're uh, there, yeah, yeah, and they've got tiny heads. I mean, I think we had no, we had dinosaurs before. We didn't have dragons before, did we? No, Ma- no. well, not outside of like dinosaur time. No, like we 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 haven't seen any proper dragons. Yeah, but then. You know, Beaky sort of realizes it's a dragon, and uh, we, we leave him sort of fighting a dragon basically, in a cloud. Yeah, in a cloud, uh, like classic cartoon fight. Um, and at the end, uh, his mum is there going, "Oh, where's my little killer?" And cooking dinner, yeah. and he comes home, and he just sort of lands there, and she goes, "Oh, you never bring back any meat." And then it pans down, and in his claws is the tail of the dragon. He's hanging from the cliff, and the dragon, much like the guy from the the, the draft board, went, yeah. "Oh, I wouldn't say that." Yeah. And so Beaky's just carried a dragon back. So, so he's, he's strong enough well. to beat up a dragon, and so much so he didn't kill the dragon. Yeah. The dragon just gave up yeah. and was like, fine, I'm going to get eaten. But Beaky has gone from, like, sort of very furtive and, well, as the title of the cartoon says, bashful, yeah. to really quite formidable. Yeah, fighting a dragon. Yeah. And it was big. So I'm glad we didn't skip that one. <clears throat> yeah, me too. What was interesting was... Um, his brothers and sisters bringing back a whole array of different things where the size and shape of them didn't really seem to affect gravity. As long as they were being pulled along by the buzzard, they would just go along as normal. So at first you see like a cow being dragged along by its head, but the farmer's there milking the cow. And then the farmer walks off into midair and then falls to the ground with his pail of milk. And it's like... but. You weren't hanging on to the cow by its udders. Like, he was just going along. Gravity hasn't changed for him because he hadn't yeah. noticed. 
Yeah, like, yeah, there's a lot to support our gravitational triangle. Yeah. Including a chain of elephants, legally uh, distinct final elephant carrying yeah. a big sign that says, I am not Dumbo. <laughs> and it wasn't. Which, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know if that got them out of legal trouble. I mean... Because it a, basically was. Yeah. But I don't know how you can get away, like, you know, can you copyright a, 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 a group of elephants? Yeah, but it had, the, the, it had the little hat. It did have the little hat. Like, it, and it did look an awful lot like Dumbo. Yeah. Except the sign. Except the sign. To the my sign... memory, Dumbo never carried a sign saying, I am not Dumbo. No. No, he, he never got <laughs> that sick of fame. No. There's a point where he just would hold a sign I'm saying, just, it's not me. A sign. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, I mean, the episode didn't answer much, but it was, it was, it, it just threw another couple of things into the mix. Yeah. Dragons. Well, dragons primarily. It threw one thing into the mix. Yeah. Dragons. And, you know, a, an R world thing into the mix. <laughs> it's like, do you think it was just a toon, uh, little elephant who dressed as Dumbo, uh, because they knew that on our side of the portal we need to keep up a facade that this is like an animation studio, and it's just like I'm gonna have some fun with them. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, absolutely wave I mean, trademark and copyright. The thing is, like, was that a baby elephant or was that an adult mouse? It's always hard to tell. Yeah. It's always hard to tell. <laughs> I, mean, I guess that's sort of what they look like in between. Yeah, so kind of teenage. Yeah, it's a, teen, it's a teenage mouse elephant. Yeah, teenage mouse slash teenage yeah, elephant Yeah, because I forgot. The, like, I mean, didn't forget that it was the case, but like, I haven't been watching a lot of the mouse cartoons. With that in mind. With the, with the idea that, you know. It's going to turn into an it's elephant. It's going to turn into elephants. Maybe, maybe that's the difference between mice and rats. Mm, maybe, yeah. Do you stay? <laughs> Do you stay like Is that? It, yeah. Like if 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 you're if you're a rat, that's it. That's that's all you're ever going to be. If you're a mouse, you're going to become an elephant. Yeah. Like mm. sometimes they're just in their little sort of skirting board house, and they're going. I'm sure. I'm sure this was a roomy apartment <laughs> when I moved in. <laughs> but it's getting. A Do you lot think there's smaller. many humans with just like a sort of malformed elephant just in the wall somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that is the. She just can't move. It room. dies and just. Oh God! The smell. <laughs> and you go, oh, just what's a dead that? Elephant in the skirt. And it's like it's definitely in here, and they they break open the 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 wall, and, and there's, there's a... just like some awful massive <laughs> elephant. <laughs> uh, potentially, <laughs> it, it's, it's a it's it's a risk. It is a risk. <laughs> it is a risk. I, like, I, I'm, so I'm there's that to think might, about. Yeah, I'm guessing they might learn at some point that they're probably an elephant when their nose gets bigger. Yeah, but my point is, is that before or after they can get out their front door? Ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I don't know because I reckon it's probably uh, after they can get out of their front door but before they're strong enough to just break through the wall yeah so really you've got to you've got to hope that they hit like mouse puberty outside yeah or someone else says recognizes like, that oh you're a mouse not a rat so if you don't out. know yet don't live alone yeah that's why there's always that's or why there's always like two of them go get tested have you seen a mouse sign? Has there been a mouse scientist? Well, no, well, I'm, what I'm thinking well, I wouldn't, is... Why wouldn't it have to be a mouse scientist? It would just have to be a mouse scientist. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the, the way to test it would be to put you in front of an elephant, and if the elephant's scared, you're a, you're a mouse. If it's not scared, you're a rat. Yeah, but didn't we decide that elephants were scared of mice just because they were, like, sort of... They're commitment phobic. They were afraid of responsibility. They yeah, didn't want to have to look after but, a child. But if you put a rat in front of it, I reckon the elephant would know. Oh, so you reckon the elephant it's, wouldn't it's be terrified of it's, it's young? Yeah, uh, I reckon it's just like, oh god, it's a mouse. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas a rat, it's like I don't have to have anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah, not my problem. Yeah, non fun. That, that's that's how I think you tell. Okay, now we know. Yeah. So yeah, get, if if you're a mouse or or well, if, if you're if a mouse you're, or rat, yeah. and you and, and you're in any way concerned that you might be a mouse, go and stand in front of an elephant. Go and get yourself tested. Go and see an elephant. Yeah, stand in front of it. If it screams, if it screams, you're going to be an elephant. One get day. a bigger house. <laughs> yeah, or live outside. Or live outside for a bit. See, see what you're going to need. Yeah, get a job of work. I would suggest because your yeah, rent possibly in the fire brigade. Your rent's going to go up. What, the fire yeah, brigade. the fire brigade. That'd be they've good. Got a big hose. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, be good. You wouldn't need to get them in like a big red truck. You just get them, you know, to big paint red jacket. You red. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well. 
Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's what it is when you see a load of elephants in a row? Like, and with like red, like, bag Yeah, it's Do you not think a that's, circus. that's a fire engine? Yeah, yeah they, they, they're just the fire brigade for the local area. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that is that is yeah, what's going that's on, a, that's a, uh, and we've got that uh, we got that from a Beaky Buzzard episode. Imagine that. Weird. Imagine that. Ah, well, there you go. It's funny um, how these things go. Well, uh, you'll be happy to know uh, that we have uh, not a new character, but the first appearance of an old character, Hector. The first appearance of Hector. Yeah, this it says time. the first appearance of Hector. It is not. It's not. We've had Hector. We've had a Hector lot. a fair amount. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is the first time he's going to speak. Because he's pretty much just been the bulldog entity he has. before. And he's in with Sylvester now, which is his his rightful place. He should be in yes. there with Sylvester. Tweety's not in there yet, but... No, you know, but he's probably not in the mix, so. but yeah, He's just out murdering. <laughs> He'll be back. And he will. Uh, so uh, let's watch our last one for today then. Uh, Peck up your troubles. Uh, it's a Sylvester and the first appearance of Hector <laughs> number from October 20th, 1945. Oh, let's, let's go see Hector for the first time ever. How are we feeling? Yeah. Just, feel, just, yeah. I feel, I feel, um, I feel good, I guess. Uh, what was interesting in this one was Hector, considering it was his first appearance. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't in it much. He wasn't in he it much. He didn't say anything. His, his cage said. His uh, kennel said Rover. Yeah, and he was um, very protective over one particular tree. Yeah, he's a very, very big fan of that tree. Yeah, and Sylvester doesn't talk. He's adamant, despite his uh, protesting in the last time we saw him about eating a bird. He was very very adamant he was going to eat the woodpecker this time. Yeah. Although the last time his adamant that he wasn't going to eat the bird wasn't because he didn't want to eat no, the bird. No, I thought it was a poison bird. Yeah. Yeah. But this this woodpecker proved um, very clever in uh, avoiding being eaten. Um, it's just a classic bird chase episode. Yeah, it didn't really answer much. There were some weird things. Electricity doesn't work the same way. No. Like he's going across a power line. And the bird's there by the switch. Yeah. I don't know why there's a switch there, but, Uh, you know, there is. Yeah. Um, But, you know, theoretically, he shouldn't have been electrocuted. No, because he was just standing on the one wire. Yeah. And yet, apparently, that was enough to electrocute him. He grounded himself. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering... Yeah, I I, I was trying to find, like, a way in which, you know, he could have been earth but yeah he wasn't like, at all no i mean like he had a bit of wood in his hand so i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. is that, cause, is that maybe part that? of the tuna versus rules maybe that electricity i do not know yeah, if you've got wood in your hand you get electrocuted maybe that yeah uh, he also gets on a kite uh and flies himself um yeah but i think i think that's explainable in the gravity triangle yeah because yeah, so- i think if you've got the mental capacity to be an absolute denial of your own mass. Uh, no, of the fact that you're not supported by anything. No, that's true. Uh, and at some point, he also he holds up a sign to communicate with us as well. Uh, why yeah, didn't I think, I of think this that's because he was trying to be quiet, though. Possibly. But he held up another one saying, anything's possible in a cartoon. And then he proceeds to walk up the A yeah. like it is stairs. But I think that's uh, that was like... Because that, at that point, it, he, it had gone past, I want to eat this bird, and into like revenge. Because the bird had dressed as an angel... And uh, like after he thought he'd crushed the bird, because he crushed a tomato. He did, yeah. The bird basically just swapped out for a tomato inside his little house and Sylvester crushed it and then his hand was all covered in red and he was like, you know, like everyone is, when they, except for Tweety, when, they, when yeah. they kill someone in the team Instantly world. Which is, oh God, I've killed a thing. Uh, and so he was, he went back, was real guilty about it. The bird knew this and dressed as an angel yeah. and went in there and just handed the him a revolver. On the floor. Just and start walking floor. out, and Sylvester's about to shoot himself in the head when he sees that his angel costume is made from a like a tobacco pouch. Yeah, what I find and, interesting about the suicide, but he still bit, ch- still can't yeah. stop himself pulling the trigger. Well, he couldn't stop himself from picking up the gun either. His hand was shaking, so he clearly didn't want to. But there's some law in their like natural law in their world 
where the guilt runs the, deep. Yeah, the suicide is it's happening. Because we see a lot of suicide. We do see a lot of suicide. Like, um, it's it's disconcerting, really. But what was interesting was in the end, um, Sylvester gets killed. Yeah, I mean, I'm presuming it's one of his nine lives. Yeah, well, I was I was thinking that. either that or he's uh, <laughs> begun on a similar cunning ruse to the bird played on him. Yeah, I'm wondering whether or not. Um, Bugs is going to do something to stop that from happening. Well, I don't because know because if that's one of his nine lives, like we'll have to keep a count. Let's keep let's keep a tally. Well, if it, but it is one of his nine lives. Where was his body? Well, I think he scarpered, and you just uh, and we just saw one of his one of his many spirits up there. He was and ready. It hadn't had a chance to, to re- get back in exactly because he'd legged it because he'd legged it. But so I Sylvester's also, on eight. Well, he's either on eight or he uh, floated up there on a cloud, and uh, it's part of a cunning ruse. Possibly. Because he was like, ah, oh, angel outfit, is it? That's That's got something. I did expect more from Hector this time round. Not going to lie, considering Especially this is billed as his first appearance. Even though he's been he's in several times. episodes. He was Rover as well. Like, I, think his I just think he was living in Rover's house. Because the background... Post-apocalyptic. ...was like post-apocalyptic. It was just wrecked houses and stuff. Yeah. And like, I'm wondering if something happened at the house where Hector was... Rove is his human given name, but his name is Hector. Yeah. Um, because we've never se- we've never heard him speak, have we? No, 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 I've never. So, like, all. currently he's, you know, like so far as we're concerned, he's uh, he's he hasn't had his moment. He's, he's no, you know, he's a dog as we know dogs. Yes. Um, so I think he's bi- he's listed as Hector in our list because at some point he's That's going to have a moment yeah. and he'll be Hector. But currently, his human given name is Rover. Now, I think his humans are gone. Because yeah. that whole area is wrecked. Yeah, it did. Like, there was broken down houses. And I think the one thing, he's, one thing he's got left is that tree from, like, their yard. Right, okay. And that's why he's so protective over it. Because the house is, you know, fucked. Yeah. Everything's fucked. It's just a, it's just a wasteland. He's got, he's got his little dog house. And we don't tree. know where this is, but, like, yeah, something happened there. Something bad. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It was a bit weird. And there's a woodpecker there. And there's a woodpecker there. He's, he's there too. He seems to have a very nice house. But there again, he can carve pretty much anything he wants with yeah. his face. And he was still doing it. He just moved in because he carved his porch, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, interesting episode. It was nice to see Sylvester again. Yeah, um, it didn't It didn't raise much about the universe. We've got to work out how electricity works. And we've got to work out if Sylvester's on uh, eight. eight lives now. Um, but apart from that, not much to add. No, not really. I mean... It- Puts us in good stead for next week. I mean, I it gives us somewhere that's a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah. But we well, don't know where again, that but is. But there again, uh, kind of post-World War Two, you might expect to find some areas like that. In the States? Yeah, but this is Tooniverse. This isn't... Yeah, we don't know how their war yeah, panned out. Like, they, like, this, isn't, this isn't our America. This is yeah. their America. And I guess we won't find out. No. Because war's over. It is. So. We'll see. We'll see how how long they harbour a grudge for. <laughs> well, I think they can harbour a grudge for quite a while. I reckon so as well. Yeah. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll wait find and see. out. We'll find out. Yeah, next week maybe, and in the coming weeks. Yeah, but right now, that's uh, that's all for today. That uh, is all for today. I think. So yeah, come to, come to the live show, thirteenth of June, three pounds. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Pavilion. Pavilion. Reading. Look at that. Tickets available at kaiju.fm. Slash live or over the bar or over the, the bar and axe head. Wonderful. Oh, until um, then. Yeah. Uh, until next week. Bye. Bye.